Hi guys, and welcome back to the Terriers Talk. Uh, this is a guest show for the first time in six months, obviously with the great Andy Booth. Uh, but this time, someone equally as heroic in the Huddersfield Town sort of fan base, uh, a man who needs no introduction at all, uh, Michael Heffler. Uh, we're delighted to have you on, mate. Thank you so much again uh, for being here today. Um, and I think we'll just get right into it. So we'll start as usual. Uh, with what we like to ask our guests, which is sort of the thoughts on uh, town season so far up to this point. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I think you do a great job, you guys. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, through the season, I think uh, we can be uh, very happy and la lucky about it, how we, we, we're we doing so far after a slow start, I would say. Um it turns around that we had a very, very good start in the season and uh, everybody would, would sign this before before the season started, where we're sitting now, uh, how many wins we got on the board and how our um, how our performance improved game by game. Uh, I think it's very positive that you see a unit, uh, a togetherness on, on the pitch and we are always, always dangerous. To, to win, especially through set pieces, we are very dangerous. So uh, I'm I'm very very happy about uh, the whole start. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and we're going to take a bit of a trip down memory lane uh, to July 2016 when you joined Huddersfield Town. Just tell us, Michael, how did the move come about? Well, the move uh, was quite straightforward. Uh, my contract ran out at Dynamo Dresden. I had <laughs> a very good season, I scored seven goals, was uh, was captain. So uh, I could easily stay there because um, it was is a fantastic club too. But I told my my agent I want to go to England, and all of a sudden uh, the call come from David Wagner. Or like my agent said, like, are you interested in going to Huddersfield Town? I said, like, what is this? Where? Yeah, England. Okay, let's do this. I, after this, I hang up, and then I straight away googled where is Huddersfield, uh, what stadium, what position, and and I and I liked it. I liked it straight away. So um, for me, it was a no-brainer to come here to England to fulfill my dream. Uh, and uh, yeah, Huddersfield Town gave me the opportunity. Uh, Dean Hoyle was. Uh, was uh, a big part of, of this that he gave like David the trust that he can do some business, uh, bring in some crazy Germans. So it worked out on the end of the day, and I'm I'm very thankful that I got the opportunity to, to join first time, the Terriers. Yeah, I mean you mentioned uh, David Wagner there and the uh, the crazy Germans. Obviously, we saw in that promotion season a, a very close knit squad. Who was the players that you kind of got along with the most? And who was kind of players that were quite unexpected in that dressing room? Well, I come, I come up with every player. I was like, I was like, okay, or like oh, good with, you know. I, yeah. I tried to get to the English lads to learn English, obviously, to get their culture, because this is what I like. I'm very open-minded. Uh, see how things are going in different countries how what what rituals they have like what 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 are they all about how how they're training what they eat or how they are how is the banter obviously a little bit but i helped them out so uh as well with the international lads it was it was just great to be around such a different yeah environment with like diff different characters and it it just like glued together and we had a very good bunch of lads in the dressing room and like uh, around the place, not just the players, uh, the staff, the staff behind the staff. So everything was just like set up for success. But you knew you, you, you just recognize it a couple of years later, obviously, where, where, where you see different teams, different groups, and then you you really feel like, mm, yeah, we had there something special and it was totally special. But you don't you? feel it like this. You don't feel it when you're, when you're in the process because it's flowing, everything is good, you're focused, you're concentrated. Uh, but we have like an a unbelievable, unbelievable uh, group of people here around. Would you put a large part of that down to the, uh, the pre-season um, experience that are, was it quite, a, was it quite, 
already built up before that. No, nah, it's not just the preseason. It just gradually built up through season as a phase. Then the first couple of games, then you're starting to get success. Then like more people are coming in the stadium. So it's just gradually building up, building up, uh, getting more confidence. All of a sudden, believe, believe more. So and just different circumstances happened accidentally or like, you know, and it just like it was our season. It mean to be that we have success and the stories you can't write beforehand. You just like, you just live it. I mean, you spoke culturally about um, how you were quite interested to know about Huddersfield. How would you compare it to, uh, to Dresden? Um, Huddersfield, that is. Well, compared to Dresden, uh, it's this different environment because like here you can work you have like uh, all the people around you, you know, even on the training, you, you work like a more or less just with your team. In, in Dresden, for example, the trainings are always open. So they're literally always like a thousand people around the training ground. And you always like more or less uh, been watched from, from, from the supporters or like the city is more or less Dynamo Dresden. So if, if we guys go for a dinner in Dresden, it won't be like quiet, you know, because like people will come taking pictures, taking selfies, especially when we play good. And when you don't play so good, you feel this as well, because everybody um, is in love with the club and cares about the club, you know, and there are boundaries then obviously not boundaries anymore, you know, and here's the culture different, you know, not a lot of people coming like for picture or selfie uh, when you have like a dinner or they're asking very kindly or you don't don't get so much stick uh, when when you lose the game so there is not so much pressure uh, on this side um, but like culturally the fans were as well here backing us up you know we're like our 12th men in in, in the John Smith which is similar to the Dynamo Dresden where they're like always thirty thousand. Uh, spectators away 5,000 so um, it's, it's, it's similar but they're like a little bit more ex extreme which which is good as well everybody got got his own charm his own style so um, yeah it's, it's, it's different but two different clubs you know yeah 100% and um, I think the fans at Huddersfield of course took to you very quickly um, and obviously, I'm sure you'll, of course, you know about your chant to the tune of the song This Girl, which is we've heard a few times this season already. Uh, just how much do you appreciate that sort of support from the town fan base and how much did it help you uh, when you were playing, of course, in them to two full seasons? Unbelievable, unbelievable. It was like always a dream, boys, for me to come to England and to have your own song. Because in Germany, you don't have like, singled out players with the song you just sing about the football club and here is quite unique and special that like players get their own song so this was always a big big aim to get a song so literally hopefully play good play well to receive a song for the fans so and i was very uh, happy and lucky and i'm very thankful for this uh that like the appreciation what I got from the supporters, they understand that I always give like 110%, that I leave my heart out for the football club, um, that I fight for everybody. Uh, and I got this back from, from the supporters and this relationship is until now a one-off one as well. So um, I got their back whenever and uh, they got my back. And to have this relationship with every supporter, I'm so thankful. And um, yeah, I, I probably wanted to shake everybody around this place, every supporter, uh, the hand to thank them, to thank them for, for supporting me. Um, yeah, it means a, a lot to me. It means a lot to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sure it does. Um, and we'll go back to the, the pitch now and we'll talk about players again. And it's never nice to have favourites, uh, but I'm sure you did. And we asked this question to Boothy as well. Who would you say while you were at town was sort of, either your favourite or the most, uh, the best, you know, the player's player, as it were, the best player you played with while you were at town, if you had to pick one or two? 
best player for me, without a doubt, Aaron Moy. Aaron yeah. Moy is, uh, is underrated, I think. Uh, but this guy, uh, he could play in any in any Premier League team, uh, in my opinion. I never saw a better, better player, calmer player um, in a team. So, and he's a very, very good, good character as well. Izzy Brown, unbelievable, unbelievable abilities. What, what these kids uh, are capable of is just uh, in, insane, you know. So, uh, this, these two were like very good very good but like there were a lot of good of players good of characters uh in the team you know some had more abilities and skills in football the others more about like mentality character yeah. uh, like elias kachunga he's always fighting he gave a great uh mentality jonathan hawk different player to aaron moy for example but you can rate them the same because what hoggy is doing is one off two what he's covering how his his game is recover the ball play it simple so um yeah um, just like i said boys it's, it was great to play in this team and uh, yeah i'm just very thankful about it yeah um, there was a lot of talent in that team obviously um but we'll go to the opposition now and obviously you played in the premier league you had a season in the championship but for you who would you say was the hardest player or the best player you've had to come up against? Well, Paul Pogba was quite, quite good, <laughs> I would say. He's a very good player, um, especially how tall he is and how yeah. smooth he's moving. Um, yeah, quite a good player. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Sammy, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to moments uh, as, as well, like some, some key moments. Aston Villa away, I think that was your uh, first goal at town. Leeds, which was if you had to pick a, a top three, what would you uh, would say were the were the three? Uh, it, this is hard, you know, because there's different circumstances. For example, at Aston Villa, this was my debut at Villa yeah. Park, and like this, this will be a moment of my life where where I had my first step in the English football, and I dreamed of this. And after sec- twenty seconds, <laughs> to get uh, to get like a part of my body on it, then score very smooth in front of the away fans and all the emotion, all the, yeah, all the power to, 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 to receive and to see what's, what's football all about, all this passion, you know, uh, big, big up there. And as well, the other one against Leeds where we, where we won last minute crucial game. We stayed in the top six and this was a kind of like where we are going, um, a big moment, big moment too. Obviously it's nice now, you know, if you go out for some dinner, wherever, the Leeds, and some Leeds fans are there, they want to give you a little <laughs> stick about their Premier League, whatever. But, you know, back in the day, we sent them home crying, you know, we yeah. sent them to sleep boys and this is hurting still. And, and to be part of this, and to wear in this position is just like, uh, yeah, I, I dream again for myself. And these are like top, top, top moments. You know, it's not about the goal. It's about what happens around. When you see the stadium, what, what's going on there with, with, with all the people around. Oh, uh, yeah. Or as well, like when we, when we were in the semis with Sheffield Wednesday away, when we won nil down and all of a sudden all the Wednesday fans are like, Phew putting some big pressure on us, you know, and we, we just had to, had to come through these five minutes where I thought like, oof, we are now here in the open ocean in a little nutshell and one wave is coming after the next one to get a grip and just stay in your boat, overcome these five minutes. When we're through this, we can, we can, we can still win this game, what we did on the end of the day. So, um, yeah, a lot of, lot, of, lot of different moments, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, after Chelsea away, there was obviously that infamous video of uh, you singing the Laurent Duplatra chant. Um, that's, I think, a video that stayed in hearts for so long. And I think that really epitomised how close that squad was together with names that had only been there for a season. Do you think that was so promotion, uh, so, so, so reason as to why we did stay up that season? Definitely. We had a good team spirit. Um, 
it's not a, just about the first 11, it's about everybody in the team. And uh, yeah, I was so happy for Lolo that he got like uh, this goal because what it means for the whole football club, what it means for every individual as well. Um, and he's a very good character and a friend of mine. So I was just like over the moon for him, to be honest. Was that potentially your favourite town champ of another player that you had? Or was there, was there any others that uh, topped you? Nah, I think there was, yeah, there was not, not much. <laughs> no concrete. Uh, yeah, and touching on the Chelsea and the Premier League as a whole, uh, I'm sure it's a lot of footballers and just people in general's dream to play in the Premier League. And we've talked about Paul Pogba, of course, as one of the uh, highlights from the Premier League. But how good was it to say that you were a Premier League player and you were part of a... Uh, a real underdog story. I think we were written off uh, very early by a lot of pundits and, you know, predictions people like to do. And uh, we managed to get it over the line. And just how good was that? It's just good to prove people wrong because, like, yeah. opinions are opinions. And uh, I had so many, so, so many opinions about myself that I'm not good enough, that you're, you're, you're too slow, that you're technical, worse, and all this this stuff, what is just like, yeah, stupid things, what people are telling. And this is for everybody in the yeah whole community or like whoever is listening to this. If, if like your employee everywhere or somewhere and you and some people are just like, don't having you and you have, but a different opinion. Don't let yourself down and like believe in yourself. This is key. Believe in yourself and make your way because nobody, nobody can bring you off this way. You know, it's just about yourself. If you put all the hard work in, if you put the belief in yourself, then you can be whatever you want to be and you will prove them wrong. But like, you need, you don't need other people. You just need yourself, you know, you need your focus and obviously your determination that you're on there, that you're on there. And nobody, nobody else can like uh, say something about your life, what you can't do or what it can do. So to prove all these people right is, is yeah, it, it's good, but I don't really care about these people. So um, I, I knew it already beforehand, but nobody knew it this time. So yeah, it is obviously nice to fulfill a dream and to, to, to play in the Premier League to achieve a promotion through Wembley Stadium which is like insane uh, uh, a year before I played like third league in Germany and all of a sudden in two years you, you play Premier League so tell me this now when you go now to some pundits or to some guys who have like a clue they say no chance this guy will go in the Premier League so uh, uh, I'm a real example for all the young kids who are in uh, no academy uh, not professional you 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 can do this if you work very hard and um yeah if you really want it yeah but, i mean that's great to hear and i'm sure there'll be loads of town fans who will take something from that uh, i mean there were great times at the club uh, and unfortunately you know some great times have to come to an end uh, and it was a sad day when your departure was announced to nottingham forest how was it to move away from the club um, because obviously, I think you were that one player who had a real attachment with the with the club as a whole. Yeah, it was, uh, to be honest, very sad for me to leave the football club because it means so much for me, Huddersfield Town, and it gave me so much. And uh, it was, I, I, I never wanted to leave. I never wanted to leave at any point. I wanted to stay here. Uh, but, you know, football is football and, you know, things happen decisions are taken, whatever. Um, so I went to Nottingham Forest and uh, it's a good club. It's a massive club, great history. So I was quite happy with the move uh, three years there. Uh, but how things worked out for me was not really ideal. Played a half a season there and then obviously torn my Achilles, which, uh, yeah, which, which took me out for one year. And, and after this major injury, obviously your broken toy, if, you, if a toy is broken, you get a new one. And in this industry right now, you're very, very easy, changeable, and people are 
coming in they don't fancy you anymore whatever there is no time so um it was not a great spell from from this point on the the first half a year was okay where where i played and we did fairly okay but um yeah i learned i learned a lot of things and it was like probably the the darkest time like in 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 my life and how yeah how things uh yeah where there it was like not not too nice and uh, yeah it, it made me mentally stronger and like from a character even stronger so i took a lot out of this even if it was not nice and even i i don't want to wish this anybody so uh, after this rain and after this dark times i'm so happy to be on the sun side again at Huddersfield Town, where it's just pure joy to go in here every day on the ground, seeing all the people. And this is just like, you know, so good. How did the uh, the move back to town like come about then? Like, obviously, with your injury, was that a kind of place where you uh, was kind of studying the kind of off the field aspects of football and what you could potentially look at getting into when your playing time came up? Well, I mentioned it a couple of times that uh, the chairman, Phil Hodgkins, and, and, and you were in contact about February or something like this. He was asking me what I'm doing, how is my situation in the summer. And I had to tell him that I obviously retired because another injury uh, was, was, was literally killing me with my knees. So um, I, I, I told him I want to be coach, manager, sporting director, something like this, if you can imagine to do such a project, you know, and he discussed it with Lee Bromby, which, uh, which was as well uh, positive about this. So I'm very thankful that they brought me back to the football club and um, gave me the opportunity to develop myself, to learn a lot, uh, to go my own way on the other side. So it's, it's, it's nice to be back. It's, it's nice to be back that they can have the possibility and the opportunity to, to be here in, in a great environment where everybody's caring and where where I can can put my work in when where I can develop myself and do the next steps in my in my next career. Is there any players that you can kind of liken yourself to currently at the club? So like the, the younger defenders potentially coming through now? Again? Is there any like players that you can kind of see yourself in like at the club now? So like the younger players. So uh like a Ramani of Green, do you see yourself in him or like oh, come on, my friend. There's nobody like Michael Hefele. Hey, come on, hey. <laughs> Have to try yeah, a lot of, lot of good kids are there. A lot of good kids are there. Um, and I try to, like, just mentor, like, the academy, the first team, a bit, and bots, wherever you can can help. I just want to help, help, help. I, I want to help everybody. I want to pass on some experience. If they take it, yes, it's fine, it's great. If they don't take it, if they don't want it, it's no problem. It's no problem. But like I try that they understand the, the career is very short, what you can achieve um, and what you have to do for it. Day in, day out is a 24-7 full-time job. You can't show, show up here in training and do all the things right. And then you go home and sitting with a burger on the couch and drinking the Coca-Cola and not sleeping, you know. So this is not, it's not working. You need respect. You need discipline. You need a good togetherness and these are key things what i want to mentor them not just like tactical skills technique skills it's about like life skills this is like a big big key point what i what i what is in my agenda and what i want to bring across and help the people yeah well we're all extremely happy that you've come home uh, to huddersfield and long may it continue i suppose is all we want to say, but I think that about wraps it up for everything we wanted to talk about. Uh, so once again, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. It means an awful lot to us uh, to have you here, of course, and I'm sure this has been really insightful and really enjoyable uh, for a lot of Huddersfield fans who are watching. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there for now, guys. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. Uh, but please like, as always, subscribe, share it around. You won't want to miss this one. And uh, we will see you for the review next time. Cheers, guys.